Hi there. I hear this last guy is great, so you know, I know it's been, he took a long drive and through snow and all kinds of horrible weather. And anyway, so my name is Bob Weiss, and I guess I'm going to introduce myself on the next slide. But the subject we're going to talk about for the next couple minutes are cyber threats that happen to small businesses. <coughs> You might think you're too small to be a target. And I love using that phrase because, of course, we're all thinking of that target Christmas <laughs> thing. All right? Am I too small to be like target? No, you're not. OK, you are not. And I've got some really great scary stories here to tell you about it. So I'm uh, currently working at Computer Integration Technologies, an 85-person integrated IT services firm. We provide computer stuff whatever you need in a, to small businesses uh, from two to you know, 2,000 employees all across uh, the Twin Cities in central Minnesota. Um, I'm a certified ethical hacker. You gotta keep aware of that little ethical part in the middle. <laughs> as scary as it sounds, but I always get a nice little when I say that. I'm currently working on another security certification called the CISSP, which is really too hard to remember what that and what it means, but I'm in the middle of that one. Um, I've been a cybersecurity blogger for about seven years at wiseguyscybersecurity.com. I own my own business, um, Wise Guys uh, Computer and Network Support, for like 15 years and foolishly went to work in for paid employment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> been a great transition, a little odd. I didn't ever think I'd go back to work for, you know, like company like doing what I was doing but uh, but anyway wise guys is the uh, wise guys is me you'll know, figure out why in a minute if you haven't already and it's wiseguyscybersecurity.com I also um, featured on the CIT company website um, they keep telling me they want to blog me more often but I blog three times a week and they haven't picked up on my frequency yet so I'm still you can find me there anyway let's talk about what's happening out there um, Small businesses are in the crosshairs. Uh, they're being targeted by cyber criminals. Why? Because they have more money in the bank than grandma. Grandma's an easy mark. You know, get phone calls all the time, grandma. Oh, we're from Microsoft. We've mm -hmm. detected terrible <coughs> stuff happening to your computer, and they tricked grandma into signing up for a $300 worthless support contract, and God knows what else they do. But, but you know, businesses are fatter. They have money in the bank. They have less security than larger enterprise class businesses. In fact, you've got yourself a nice little 10-year-old sonic wall grinding away on the rack back there in your whatever server closet you think you have, and you think that's good enough and you're wrong, especially if it's 10 years old. Uh, employees have little or no training about cybersecurity, and they're easy to exploit. You need to plan to be attacked because you will be hacked if you haven't been already. And you may be hacked now and not know it. Most of the malware exploits are written to run quietly, behind the scenes, not doing too much dangerous until they manage to make money on the deal. Okay? You may be informed of your hack by your best customer, like Target got to inform the little HVAC contractor who provided network access to the cyber criminals on that one. A bad day to be that guy. You may be informed by your credit card processor, which usually means they're going to jack up your rates, Heartland, around here somewhere, right? Right. Yeah, okay. So, you know. You may hear from your bank, or it might be a government regulator. If you're in a regulated industry, you may be getting a little knock on the door from HIPAA or whoever, you will be fined, you may be sued, you might end up in the news, and you need to be prepared for those things. When, you know, CARE 11 shows up outside your building, you need to have something to say there. So go back to wherever you go to after a meeting like this and write that statement. Okay, they'll be there. If you really care, hire a media person to write this statement. But practice it a few times, because it's going to be, you know, you're going to look at me and go, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my sonic wall, it was working fine a minute ago. <laughs> That's not a good answer. Um, 
Criminal groups started moving to the web about 2004. I mean, they were certainly there before, but let's just say that organized criminal groups who held up banks by running into a bank with masks and guns have moved on to kinds of crimes where they don't need guns and they don't need to worry about being shot. This is a step up for them. Cybercrime is popular because it's very lucrative. Last year, you know, I mean, this is a guesstimate, but it's like $10 billion underground economy, cybercrime, last year, $10 billion, okay? I can teach one of you, I don't know which one, you have to be a little smart, mm -hmm. to make ridiculous amounts of money with a simple exploit, okay? <coughs> and then you and I can retire to Brazil. No extradition, okay? It'd be a good thing. No, <laughs> we're not doing that. Um, most computer exploits are about the money, not all. Every now and again, some group like Anonymous is doing it for political or social or economic reasons or what have you. But mostly it's about money. Most m malware, and malware is a malicious software. And we're not talking about viruses anymore. We're talking about a really well-written code to do something, just like Microsoft Word does something, right? Well, malware is designed to do something, and usually it's making money somewhere along the line. These are typically larger and sophisticated operations. They may be hiring college-trained computer professionals. They certainly have very talented people working for them. Although today I read a little headline. I haven't had a chance to read the article, but I do a lot of reading on this subject. And um, they're having trouble finding skilled talent, just like we are in the cybersecurity world. There's 14% negative unemployment for cybersecurity professionals like me. In other words, there's 14% of the jobs remain unfilled because there's nobody to take them. Okay, so if you got kids, they're in college, they don't know what to do, have them call them. <laughs> Um, there's a huge and thriving underground marketplace that we call the dark web because it's scary. Mm. But it's part of the internet. It's just not part that Google searches because they're hiding out there. But it's, you know, it's network. I can show you how to get there. You don't want to go there. They're not very kind to new people. They will pants you. Remember those bad kids at school? They're online now, <laughs> waiting to pants you there, okay? <laughs> Two top attack vectors. This is why perimeter defenses, you can't not have perimeter defenses. Anybody here not lock their door at home? I lock all of them. Got the double key deadbolt, thinking of upgrading to something a little fancier, we got to talk. Um, well, you're not gonna do away with that 10-year-old sign wall other than maybe to upgrade it to something newer. Um, <coughs> They're not coming in that way. They're sending an email mm -hmm. with clickable links or with an attachment that when you open it, installs some kind of little software program. The software program that gets installed off these emails is typically nothing more than a remote access program that sends out a little beacon out to the bad guy, says, I'm here, and they can connect back later on. They can connect back later on through your firewall because they'll probably come back on the same port that the web works on, port 80. Can't block port 80 because everybody needs the web. Can't block port 110 because everybody needs email. And so they use the ports that firewalls can't block because we need them open, okay? The other distribution system, sometimes used in conjunction with email, are websites. It might be a website they built so that your clickable link goes to their website. It may be a website that actually is a legitimate website that they hacked and now they've installed code on the home page so that when you get there to startribune.com, happened to them a few years ago, not to pick, but you know, that the malware is downloaded while you're reading something on that page. Okay? Sometimes they'll hack somebody's site and build their own spoofed or cloned pages so that you get an email, it looks like it's from FedEx, it says, holy crap, 
my package was destroyed. Click here to fill in a form and get your package replaced. And you click there and you go to a very realistic looking FedEx page and give out all kinds of personal information that they later sell or use to hack you in some other form, okay? So it's email and websites and mostly email. About 95% of exploits start as an email in your inbox. So if you're one of those people that can't resist clicking on links and opening attachments, resist for God's sake. <laughs> you can check. You can call the person who sent you the link and say, what's this all about? Now if they say, I never sent you an email, you know that you're being spoofed, right? I have a question. Yes, you do. You get an email, yep. and there is no link, and you don't know who it's from, and you click on it, can they still get into your system? Um, it is a link or anything. Yeah, what you're asking is, can I get infected just by opening my email? Yes. And the answer is yes, but that's not usually how they do it. That kind of code writing is really, really tough. Well, look at how are those and people doesn't just sending me those then if they're not trying to do that? Well, they may just be spamming. Spamming oh. is another sort of like tenuous underground economy okay. where we're just advertising mm -hmm. and hoping that people will buy something. Oh, okay. And that something may be not genuine Gucci bags, but made in China knockoff Gucci bags. You know, I mean, who knows? Thank You'd have you. to send me the email. I'd explain it to you. Know, take a card, forward all your crap to me. I'll tell you what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm not really joking, I love that stuff, okay? I mean, if it gets excessive, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, While well, we talked about this, so off we go. Um, yeah. So, four top targets. I've got, you know, much longer material, we don't have time, so we're just gonna talk about the four top ones. There are other things that they can do. The list is quite long. It's very interesting how you make money by being a criminal on the web lots of ways but four top targets your email account your website your stuff your electus data on your computer has value all data can be sold no matter how stupid you think it is somebody will pay for it your bank account and look you want it. okay with the right kind of software will tell me when you log on to your banking website so I can remote in and join your session. This will defeat two-factor authentication because I'm just joining a session you completed with your two-factor authentication device and I'll watch you do your little transaction and when you're gone, I'll do one for myself. <laughs> and you may not find out for a day or two and in the meanwhile I'll bounce it through about three other banks and poof, and it's gone. How that works. Okay, email account. What happens if you lose control of your email account? Well, they used to change a password and use it for spam, but now what they do is they leave it alone and they lurk. And they read your mail. They read what you get and they read what you write. Where's the written stuff in the sent file? So I can read all the email you sent everybody. I'm going to know every dang thing there is to know about you. And then I'm going to design an exploit that is so realistic that you'll bite. I'm going to send you an invoice from your own vendor with their logo and trade dress. Because why? Because I got one that I took off an email, a PDF. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to change one little thing. I'm going to change the bank information. Or they can intercept payments that you're making or payments that are being made to your company. They can watch you send out an invoice and then send an email to that customer and say, oh, by the way, we changed our bank. The new routing number is this. And until they're like 60 days past due, you're not gonna call your customer, right, and say, hey, what the heck? I mean, and who we paid you right away? Well, that money is so long gone, it's probably not even money anymore. Website. Okay, why would I want your website? If I can steal your website administrator credentials, or buy them on the dark web, I can log into your website as an administrator and add my own code. 
I can create my own pages, or I can embed, embed active code in your website that will install malicious software on people who visit my site. I can go into the database there and steal any user, customer, credit card, any kind of information that's in the database. I can deface the site. When I'm done, I'm going to put Nanny Nanny Boo Boo You Big Dodo. <laughs> right? I can use the site for a phishing exploit where I send email off to other people and they click on a link and do something silly. Well, I'll create a page that's in your site structure. doesn't have a link from your site. It's actually sort of a standalone, like a landing page you might use for advertising if anybody knows about those. Or, you know, most replica pages and malware downloads. Data, theft of data. All data has value. All that crap that's on your hard drive that you're wishing you didn't have so much of, but they keep making the hard drive so cheap, it's really hard to throw anything away because you can keep like 80 terabytes of personal information for a buck. That's my problem. Maybe not you. User credentials. So usernames and passwords for anything have value, but if it's for your Amazon account, oh sweet, mother of mercy, I can go shopping. What cannot you buy on Amazon? I mean, you know, I like a lot of them. And if you buy iPads in the United States for free, because, you know, someone else is going to pay for them, and ship them to China, you can sell them for three times more money over there. Employee data, customer data, patient data, financial data, proprietary information, trade secrets, right? The secret formula for Coke or Kentucky Fried Chicken. So how much is it worth? We're not going to spend a lot of time, you know, just soak it up with your eyeballs, but PayPal, eBay account credentials, 300 bucks. Medical records, 50 bucks. Credit card, US, four bucks. How come so much? Because the European credit cards have had the chip forever. They're harder to, you know, they're worth more. Social Security, 250 bucks. Bank account information. Let's say I get your bank account information, but I don't really want to rob your bank because that would be criminal. I can sell that information to a real criminal, kind of hands off, for 6% of the account balance. So it makes, what, does that make me a little criminal? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So don't give me that. I don't want to be tempted, okay? <laughs> um, but you see, email account, 50 bucks. Email account's worth more than a credit card. Because I can know you at a very deep level by lurking in your email box. Um, crypto locker. This is the one where you get the little pop-up that says, we've encrypted all your files for safety and please send us $3,000 and we'll decrypt them for you. What's really great about that group that does the crypto locker stuff? Okay, so encryption. This is a standard technology that many of us ought to start using to protect our own data, okay? So the bad guys protect it for us. You've been protection racket, anybody? Anybody <laughs> oh, familiar with the protection racket? Okay, so they protect it for you. And then they'll send you a decryption key, which is a very long string of gobbledygook. And that'll magically unencrypt your files. Except, of course, everybody in the room here is going, and how does that work? They have tech support. They have tech support people that will help you recover your files. A hospital in Hollywood, California, recently paid $17,000 to get the key. Why? Because it was quicker than restoring from backups, and they were desperately in need of getting things back. So they paid the, they paid the money. They paid the money. I said, you know, is it right to do that? In some cases, you don't have a choice. <laughs> if you don't have good backups that weren't affected by the encryption thing, you, you have no choice but to pay the money or start over. No amount of secret hackery stuff, no, nobody's going to break that key in your lifetime. Bank account. So there are special banking malware exploits called banking Trojan horses. There's Zeus, NeverQuest, Dire Wolf. These are wonderful names. Dire Wolf. 
Tinba, that's a Tinba. What's that? Like some cute little cartoon character in a dead Tinba? I don't know. <laughs> um, this includes a remote access tool, which lets me remote into your bank, an alert mm -hmm. function, a key logger. A key logger is a piece of software that keeps track of what you type and either sends a file automatically that can later be scanned by software to pull out the cool bits or, um, you know, might be sent on demand. And then a database of bank URLs. All the banking websites on the planet come in this little tool. When you type www.mybank.com, the keylogger talks to the database and says, we got a match there? Looks like we're banking. And if that database goes, yep, got a match. And the alerter says, wow, what the heck? And it sends a message off to the bad guys who use a remote access tool to join your session and help themselves to your money. It's the way that works. It's really, really slick, and I know I shouldn't sound so enthusiastic, but this is really great code writing. It's awesome. <laughs> so let's talk about cases. 15 employee, fuel distribution company, monthly payroll of $30,000. Thief gave access to a bank account using compromised password. Bank had recently made changes to its security process to make online banking easier. <laughs> easier is not good. Okay. It's like taking your door off. So it's easier to go in and out. Easier, not better. Um, insurance covered only a portion. California escrow company loses $1.5 million. And this is shame on the bank for this one. Nine person company, three electronic transfers of about 500K a piece going to China two times and Russia once. This is an escrow company. They're holding real estate escrow funds. This money should not be leaving the country, okay? One in December and two in January. I'm gonna accept that the one in December was a surprise, but who the heck decided it was a good idea to let these two out? Mm -hmm. The banker should be taken out in the parking lot and shot. <laughs> Maybe not dead, but in the way. Okay. <laughs> Bank provided two-factor authentication, but it was broken. And though this company had never transferred funds overseas, the bank did not question once, even on the second two. The company was put into receivership by the regulators in California, who don't like it when an escrow company loses HUD money. Construction company loses 500K, same story again. I don't think I'll go through all the details. You guys can read faster and I can talk. I know we're running out of time. Um, but, you know, here we go, Zeus 27 fund transfers. So it's not one big transfer. It is 27 little bitty transfers <coughs> all over the place. Lots of different banks. Wash the money through so many different banks. <laughs> Slovenian gang targets small business, spoofed email, sent to look like it came from a bank or a tax authority. You know, you get something from the Minnesota Department of Revenue, and you get a little like cringe, right? Gotta go to the bathroom right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you whack on that, click. You know, how do you not click on that link? And then, you know. So, Thieves Watch for online banking, they made two and a half million dollars. And this one's a target, poor Fazio Mechanical. Okay, so this is how it works. We don't know exactly, but it's, we're really, really sure it was an email. And it might have been an email like this, it came from Target, a nice little Target logo, which of course I copied off the Target website and glued onto my fake email. Mm. Takes like about three seconds, I can show you and says, we're the target IT department and we know you have network access and we're trying to put this all together in some sort of management database and could you send us our, your user ID and password for your network access and it's from Target, your biggest customer. 
how did the criminals know that Fazio was doing business with Target? Well, on Fazio's website where they're talking about what a great company they are, our best customer is Target. So you do a little research on the web, you go looking around, you go Target. I want to get into Target and see it cause some serious harm. So you do a Google search on Target and Target Corporation and Target Store and Target whatever, and eventually you come to a website for Fazio Mechanical and there's a little brag, and you go whoop de diddle. They probably found a whole bunch of braggers and sent the email to a whole bunch of different likely victims, and Fazio got blamed. They were the first to bite on the fishing. So anyway, got to be careful about that. Fraudulent invoice scam. This one's really cool. CEO sends an email. CEO is out of town. He went to China. He's looking at manufacturing facilities. This is real. And the criminals know this because they have been living in the CEO's inbox for months. And so they send an email from the CEO's email account to the CFO saying, send me $2 million, I'm buying something over here. Here's the bank routing information. This is like huge right now and it's working great. So if I was gonna pick any of these scams for my personal favorite one to do before I go to Brazil, <laughs> it'd be this one because <laughs> it's really slick and it's not that hard. So how do you defend against something like this? You pick up the freaking phone and you call the CEO and you say two million dollars <laughs> and he goes what? What do you want with two million dollars? I don't want two million dollars and it's over. Do you send them a reply by email? No! Because <laughs> the bad guys are reading the email. And they'll send one back and says, what did I tell you? Putting head, you want to be fired or you want to send me $2 million? And you'll just send the money because you don't want to be fired. Four called putting head. <clears throat> and there was another one that, you know, we're in tax season, so there's all kinds of like, taxi scams out there. One of the one that I uh, just read about um, is that the CEO is sending an email to the HR department saying, could you send me everybody's W-2s? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Seagate just got hit by that. <laughs> could you send me everybody's W-2s? And then they can go in and of course do tax filing fraud get the big refund before you get your taxes done. Best thing you can do with your income tax, by the way, is file, file quick, because these guys are right on your, you know. You don't want to be the last one over the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where can you go? I'm a little bit more advertising for the brand here, CIT Cybersecurity Services. Um, I started up here with cybersecurity awareness training because we can do presentations like this that are much longer and much more boring. <laughs> okay, not the boring part, but we can do presentations like this for your staff and help them understand what they're up against. Awareness is important because the front has moved to the inbox and Jane back there on my little flyer is your worst enemy. Go take a look. She's kind of cute. Should have a picture right here, Jane. Yeah, there you are. Thank you. Thank you, cute little pigtails. <laughs> yeah. And um, you know the cat video girl. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, security audits. Occasionally, you will be required to have one. PCI compliance, which is doing credit cards, comes up annually. We help people with the big, long, confusing questionnaire where they ask questions you don't even know what the words mean. Pretty sure this is English, I think. Well, I've done, I've done more than a few of them, so, you know, we'll get that done. And then we can do the network assessment stuff too, although usually that's provided. And we can help remediate 
any shortcomings or deficiencies so that you are in compliance. Vulnerability assessments. In the wake of the target breach, we started to see companies coming to us that said, my biggest, most important customer wants me to provide a network assessment. They want me to provide a network assessment because we talk over the internet and they want to be sure that I'm not Fazio mechanical. <laughs> Can you help me with that? Yes. So if you get that big scary letter, the really pro big problem is, is you're going to get six of them in about two months time. You can't pay for that over and over again. So you need it done once and documented so that you can just say, yeah, we did it. Thanks for asking. We've been proactive. We're like super cool. I got a cape, you know, from the guy. He's wonderful. Uh, penetration testing. Penetration testing can happen on computers and networks and software and what have you. This is where we go crazy on your stuff like the bad guys would to see what we can find out about what's soft. We will do an online reconnaissance thing where we look to see how much information there is about you in public. And I'll do all sorts of sneaky stuff like try to sneak in the front door wearing my Comcast shirt. Here in the tool belt. Can I get to the server room? We got a problem back there. We came with some stuff. I got to put some alligator clips in and rotate the bondo oil. You know, it's a day back there. Things are going to start burning. Um, computer forensics. Every now and again, you want to figure out who did what to who. We have the ability to go in and at least take a look at the logs and try and figure it out. Um, and then incident response management. Okay, remember I said you should plan to be hacked and have like be prepared. This is what we're talking about here. We'll put all that good stuff together. It's just part of your DR, you know, the business continuity, disaster recovery stuff. This is just another piece of that. Some of the services we can offer, we have a product called Zix, which provides an encrypted email. So you can, you know, if you're like a, a lawyer or medical or whatever, this is the way you should be communicating with the world. Just get it, get it encrypted. Uh, we have data backup and recovery solutions. Is that really security? It is when you lose it. You should have three copies. You should have the original copy. You should have a local backup copy on some sort of a hard drive that you can access like this. And then you should have another copy in the cloud somewhere that you can't access like this. So that if things go really bad, like the tornado comes through, you can go get your data back. Um, computer use and cybersecurity policy development, <coughs> business continuity, disaster, incident response planning, talk about that. Um, one additional thing, I've been in training all week on a new product that we're taking into our managed services portfolio called Alien Vault. You can check them out on the web. Okay, so people are sneaking onto your network. What are you going to do about it? You need to monitor what's going on in there. And you're not going to do that with a person. You're going to do that with software. So this is a very, very robust software-based tool set that allows us to watch everything that's going on in your network and detect weird stuff when it's young. Because the way it happens is you get the remote access piece, and it might be a few days or a week or a couple of months before they come back to do more harm. We want to get the early stuff. We want to get the little hello, I'm ready, that's going off to Belarus. Because traffic from you to Belarus would be odd. And we can see that. And <coughs> my laser beam gun died the new batteries. But anyway, we can fix it while it's still kind of not a problem. Before Carol Levin gets there. Okay. Or you can call Carol Levin and say, we shot it. And I got it right here if you want to take a picture of it. Kind of gnarly. Anyway, we're going to be lurking about. The rest of you all want to dash away as quick as possible without trading business cards with anybody. But you should do that. Right, Pat? You'd love them to stay in. You got the room paid for already, so what the heck. Um, got a business card back there you can take. 
picture of Jane and then see who matches. Go around the office and go. And then you know, you know. Um, you can give me a call and we can talk about this stuff for like hours. So you gotta be really careful because I will go on and on. But anyway, there we are. Thank you so much for coming.